Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in in the news tonight, incestuous father gets Fiji's first life sentence for rape. Scamming soldier to be sentenced Monday. And small island states call for skilled action on climate change. From the studios of FBC Super, Akosita Valley. A 73-year-old man who raped his daughter, impregnated her, and later raped the child she had by him has received the first life sentence for rape in Fiji. The sexual attacks occurred in Rakirake and Asinu from 1982 to 2013 on more than 400 occasions. Pranita Prakash has more. The court heard that the man first raped his biological daughter when she was just 10 years old in 1982. He continued sexually assaulting her until she got pregnant when she was 14. The victim left the house in 1990 and settled in Nasinu. The court heard that the man raped his daughter again in her Nasinu home while her husband was away and when she was heavily pregnant. Later, the man started raping the 10-year-old girl who was born as a result of his sexual acts on his own biological daughter a decade earlier. He raped the second victim repeatedly over 16 years until she ran away to join her mother. The 74-year-old man pleaded guilty to seven counts of rape and two counts of sexual assault. The judge said that for these victims, the demon was their own father who now enters in their dreams. The man, now wheelchair-bound, has been sentenced to life imprisonment with no parole. A permanent domestic violence restraining order has also been issued by the High Court. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. In another rape case, the Nasinu Magistrates Court has denied bail for 46-year-old pastor Waisake Tulavu, who is facing four counts of rape and one count of sexual assault charges. Along with Tulavu, senior church member 50-year-old Sakusa Nakutoro, who has also been charged with one count of rape, has been denied bail. While giving the ruling for bail application, Magistrate Charles Ratakele says rape is a serious offense and it is in the best interest of the court to deny the bail application. It is alleged that between May and June this year, the two raped three church members aged 22, 29 and 32 in Cunningham, Nasinu. The matter has been adjourned to December 28. Staff Sergeant Yohan and Evalurua Tulele, convicted of corruption-related charges, will be sentenced by an RFMF general court martial on Monday. Tulele was charged with numerous counts of obtaining financial advantage by deception. He appeared at the court martial this morning. Rachel Nath has more. Yohan and Evalurua Tulele was found to have obtained a financial advantage of $58,230 from the military while making deductions from the pay of 32 RFMF personnel. In the court-martial today, prosecution Captain Isaiah Parker asked the judge advocate to consider imprisonment as a deterrent to others. The prosecution said this was a sophisticated and repeated offence and that Tulele was motivated by greed. He adds Tulele was tasked with looking after the RFMF funds. However, he used them as his own pay machine, betraying the trust of the force. Defense lawyer Filimone Vasarongo asked the court martial to consider a suspended sentence as Tulele is a first time offender and served in many overseas missions. He adds the defendant has also shown remorse and issued an apology. Vasarongo also asked the court to consider that Tulele has a young family. The matter will be called on Monday for the judge advocate's sentence in brief. Rachel Now, FBC News. The 14 members of the Pacific Small Island Development States met yesterday to deliberate on the state of play at COP24, which concludes in Poland tomorrow. The members have made a declaration for scaled action on climate change as small island states are the most vulnerable to its effects. Ritika Pratap Speaking on behalf of the PCs, outgoing COP23 President Warenge Benimarama urged for a meaningful inclusion of the special report of 1.5 degrees centigrade in the COP24 decision text. We express deep concern at the findings of the special report, which conclude that the effects of human-induced climate change are worse than previously projected and that the risks to proceeds from loss and damage are extensive. 
Cook Islands Prime Minister Henry Pua echoed similar sentiments, saying the island countries can only hope that promises made at COP24 are delivered. The uh, national statement session yesterday afternoon, it was really comforting to hear everybody, without exception, singing the same tune about the urgent need to address climate change. So we live in hope, yes. Developed country and non-party stakeholders are continuously being urged to provide scaled-up finance to support national efforts to address the worsening impacts of climate change. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. In an effort to attain zero net emission, Prime Minister and outgoing COP23 President Vorenga Ben Marama has launched a low emission development strategy at the COP24 meeting. Ben Marama says the strategy promotes sustainable growth and long-term decarbonization of the Fijian economy. Kelvazala reports. The low emission development strategy sets out four possible carbon emission scenarios for Fiji and is a blueprint for a clean energy. The business as usual unconditional scenario is existing measures already addressed, being addressed by the Fijian government. The business as usual conditional scenario is uh, national policies that require external funding. The high ambition scenario is what it says. We can achieve deeper cuts in carbon emissions with substantial external funding, resources, and capacity building. And the very high ambition scenario is what we would like to do with maximum uh, external support and investment. The Prime Minister says this strategy makes Fiji the 11th nation to submit such a plan to the UN in line with Article 4 of the Paris Agreement. No Pacific Island nation has ever undertaken such a thorough comprehensive study on an economy-wide low-carbon development strategy. But we haven't done this on our own. And I want to pay particular tribute to the Global Green Growth Institute. The major areas of focus will be on the energy sector and achieving reduction in carbon emissions in land transport, maritime transport, domestic aviation, agriculture, forestry, as well as other land use and waste. Kelly Vatala, FBC News. A fire which broke out at the Oriental Seafood Bar and Restaurant in Lambasa Town this afternoon has been contained. Firefighters responded to the fire incident at around 2 p.m. Witnesses say they saw smoke coming out of the restaurant. Shoppers and workers of number one supermarket located outside the restaurant had to be rushed out. Police has cordoned off a portion of Jaduram Street temporarily to allow fire trucks through and for firefighters to do their work. The restaurant has also been cordoned off as police and firefighters conduct the investigation into the cause of the fire. The building belongs to Lambasa businessman Charanjit Singh. Still to come, early Christmas gift for Fiji airport staff and first compensation payment made to Northern families. Details after the break. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in Nakas, on the Wagarong and Bula Fib, Nabondo, I am a ser. Why I was it says, I lambasa, and the Teletan of Rong and Bula Fem, Nabondo and Ser. We have a Timeli, a Kwana Tau no Hinatoka, Teletakin and Avarong and Bula Fem, Nabondo and a ser. It was an early Christmas gift for the 540 staff of Fiji Airports as the company today announced a bonus payout of $816,000. The Fiji Airport staff were also praised for the hard work of the years and were reminded by the acting Prime Minister Aya Said Kayum to continue working together as a team. Philippe Naikaso has more. The smiles on the faces of these staff say it all as it was suddenly good news with Christmas just a few days away. Uh, those earning between 8200 uh, to, uh, to 19900 will get a fixed bonus payout of $1,000 and there's about 313 staff. Those staff who are earning between 20000 and 29000 will receive $1,500 um, a fixed uh, sum. There's about 106 of you in that category. And those staff over $30,000 will get 5% uh, of their base salary, which is a little over 100 of you. The staff were also reminded of how far the Fiji airports has come along and how just a few years back the bonus payout was not consistent. No organization in Fiji has or currently is making 
the levels of profit that airports Fiji uh, makes. In the past, we never used to receive bonus. We have been receiving such bonuses over the last uh, five years or so consistently. Meanwhile, Khan says the company will make a profit of $93.7 million before tax and depreciation for 2018 as compared to $85.9 million for last year. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. Two families have become the first recipients of the accident compensation in Vanua Levu. The two families have each received $75,000 from the Accident Compensation Commission, Fiji. Eleanor Turangevi reports. Simeon Eseru lost his eight-year-old daughter in a road accident in Savu Savu in April this year. Receiving this money today isn't the same as having my daughter alive. This week, Seru received a $75,000 compensation for the death of his daughter. It's the first accident compensation payment to be done in Vanua Levu since the new Accident Compensation Act came into place. We know that no amount of compensation will replace the lives of your loved ones. However, we hope that the compensation payments that we make today will assist you and your families during this very difficult time. The new law is based on a no-fault scheme and the process time is much less compared to before. Before it used to take years to get compensation like this. I'm thankful and grateful to receive this so soon. This is the fifth compensation payment to be made to families of road fatalities under the new law. So far this year, 66 lives have been lost on our roads. Eleanor Turangevio, FBC News. The Fiji National University is working to ensure that their students are employed after they have graduated. This comes after more than 20 students are expected to go through FNU's National Apprenticeship Scheme. FNU's manager, National Trade Test, Alvin Lal, says the scheme will allow the students to work and at the same time continue their studies. Lal says the students will be monitored and will have to prove themselves while doing their apprenticeship. Uh, apprenticeship. Apprenticeship training provides uh, uh, is the best avenue for upskilling in place people in terms of uh, it provides you know, continuously on job trainings and off job trainings. What this means is that uh, uh, whilst working in an organization, the uh, apprentices will be paid. Christmas came early for 44-year-old Daphne Mbale Wambu after being picked as the Gold FM Shania Twain Live Concert winner. Mbale Wambu's name was picked from the 1,500 entries received by the Gold FM station since the promotion began on the 20th of August. And while receiving her air tickets today, Mbale Wambu says this is a lifetime opportunity for her. She'll be leaving our shows on Monday and the concert will be held on the 18th of December in New Zealand. Meanwhile, this is Gold FM's third live concert winner having sent two other winners to New Zealand in previous concerts that were both held earlier this year. Well, this is my, this is my first trip abroad and um, I guess it's going to be an experience to be meeting up with family and uh, first and foremost, I'll be seeing Shania Twain in, live in concert and she's one of my favorite singers. So I guess um, I'm really looking forward to that. And I'd like to thank FBC as a whole for running such competitions. The University of the South Pacific has educated more than 60,000 students from the Pacific region who now contribute positively to their own communities. President Major General Retired Churchy Conrote says as USP celebrates 50 years of service, they also celebrate the success of the graduates. Catherine Krishna reports. At the university's 50th anniversary closing dinner in Suva yesterday, President Major General Retired Chochi Kondrote says the university has been home for many regional leaders. The university is continuing to perform very well in attaining its vision of achieving excellence and innovation for sustainable development of the Pacific Island countries. I believe that the USP should also be proud of its achievements especially in the areas of promoting quality tertiary education and in empowering our women and our, and our girls. Vice Chancellor Professor Rajesh Chandra says the university will continue providing the best courses in the coming years. The pride of the Pacific, the symbol of quality, research relevant, relevant research and policy work, increasing innovation and the beacon of confidence and hope for our region.
The vice chancellor says the university will continue focusing on the best for their students so they can contribute in the socio and economic development of the region. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. Coming up in sports later with Jamie, top teams qualify for the Champions League, but Rachel joins you now with business. Thank you, Akasita. Good evening and coming up after the break. More opportunities for central bank offices. And in growing Fiji, Fiji ports to invest millions into capital expenditure. Stay with us. Dollar, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Senirawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osori. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Africa, Coro Coro, Singatoka. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Salote, I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Mariva. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altiga, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic. in business tonight, employees of central banks from the region will be given a chance to work with reserve banks of developed nations with bigger economies. This will be made possible through the South Pacific Central Bankers Association and Australia's Griffins University who will be coordinating this opportunity. University senior lecturer Parmendra Sharma says the collaboration will be strongly focused on enhancing research skills. In terms of uh, more collaboration and regional cooperation, we intend to work much more closely with them, even as co-authors and working papers, and in terms of also maybe attachments at uh, some of the central banks or at Griffith as well, again, in terms of building capacity. And we now join Sinifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the financial market. Thank you. Asian shares were on the defensive today as investors kept a wary eye on economic tensions between Washington and Beijing. The euro held steady against the U.S. dollar last night after the European Central Bank, as expected, halted new bond purchases and promised to maintain policy support for the euro due to risk from trade tensions, Brexit, and budget woes in Italy and France. Data released last night stated that the U.S. federal government ran a $205 billion deficit in November compared to the expected $188 billion. Meanwhile, manufacturing activity in New Zealand slowed slightly in November, but remained around its long-term average levels. That's all from HFC Bank for this week. Back to you, Rachel. Thank you, Sanifa. On to the exchange rates as we're set this morning. The Fiji dollar was on the rise against the troubled U.S. greenback as well as the PNG Kina, the euro and the Japanese yen, but slipped slightly against the Chinese yuan as well as the Aussie and Kiwi dollars. Looking at the commodities market, oil was on the rise, climbing towards $53 per barrel. Gold continued to drop, closing at 1,242 an ounce and silver closed at 14.72 an ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, in an order to achieve further growth, the Fiji Ports Terminal Limited will be investing $5.5 million worth of capital expenditure. Board Chair Hasmuk Patel says the company will direct these funds towards investing in new technology and machines. Patel says a further quarter million dollars will also be invested into upgrading of their staff skill with a wide range of training programs planned both locally and internationally. Shareholder Fiji Ports Corporation Limited is currently completing the restoration works on Crane Amigo and having this second mobile harbour crane operational in Suva will boost our productivity and overall port efficiency to a new level. And that's a wrap from the business desk for this week. Jamie joins you now with sports. Thank you, Rachel, and good evening in sports tonight. Weightlifting Fiji's talent hunt progressing well. And Fiji FA hosts training for Just Play program. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot.
I'm Charlene Robert, Mirchi FM, Rock Team Lambasa. I'm Swana Men, Osodi Jackson, Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt, I'm a Bubble Singer Line, Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Pritika from Jack's Nursery. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nursery. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. National Sports Commission Chair Peter Mazey says more talented weightlifters have been discovered following the opening of two new clubs. After the boycott issue with the, the elite lifters from Levuka earlier this year, weightlifting Fiji had stopped competing at international events. However, Mazey says after the recent national trials, they have discovered lifters who can be developed for future competitions. Uh, weightlifting uh, Fiji held a competition here in Suva with all the new clubs, there's new clubs from Mokasui, there's new clubs from Surua, all participated in it. Uh, we brought in uh, these, but brought in talent that's been identified from Kedavu now, and uh, they're training at the National Gymnasium. It's carrying on, and new talent is coming up. Former All Blacks wing Choli Vindiri is in Vanuolevu this week to promote healthy living through sports. With the help of the New Zealand government and the New Zealand Rugby Union, Quick Rip Rugby is being introduced in Vanuolewu to promote a strong and healthy lifestyle among young people. Eleanor Turangeview reports. Quick Rip Rugby, it's the new craze in sports and somewhat similar to Rugby Sevens. It's essentially sevens without the tackle. The game is being introduced to children aged 7 to 18 years to encourage them to get into sports and make it a lifelong habit. Some of us uh, died uh, early and uh, we catch a lot of uh, NCDs um, uh, sickness. And that's why we bring this program to help young kids, to teach them a healthy lifestyle. Quick Rip Rugby was launched in Fiji in October as part of the Sports for Health program for Pacific Island countries. The purpose of the um, program is to help uh, educate and lower the incidence of non-communicable diseases in uh, the youth of uh, Fiji, Samoa, Tonga and the Cook Islands. Gilkison along with New Zealand Rugby Union trainer Wayne Masters have teamed up with former All Blacks wing Joeli Vindiri to conduct coaching clinics. We go to provinces and all that, we train up volunteers to be the ambassadors or the trainer of Quick Rip uh, around the region. The clinics are being held in Labasa, Sao Sao and Tebuni. The team heads back to New Zealand on Sunday and will be back next year. Elena Turangaiviu, FBC Sports. Rugby league legend Petro Dimonideva says their bid to have a team in the New South Wales Cup in 2020 is well underway. Dimonideva believes if the bid is successful, it would raise the profile of the minor sport in the country. He adds it will also be a great experience for local players to compete in a professional environment. Uh, the FNR Real, uh, the Fiji bid, we're all on the same page and we really want this to happen. So uh, we're working as hard as we can to hopefully bring this uh, into play in 2020. Fiji Mbati's NRL star Tariq Sims is determined to win a premiership with the Dragons and has recommitted for a further three seasons. The Fiji Football Association hosted its Just Play Development Program course today at the Fiji FA headquarters in Suva. The program is designed to assist coaches, teachers and volunteers to provide appropriate and enjoyable football activities for children. Koroi Tandolala reports. The Just Play program over the years have helped many young talented players stamp their mark on the international front. For football, I can say there's more than 50 players that are currently playing from the under 15 right up to the national team that either come through Just Play program in terms of from 6 to the age 12 or from 12 upwards. But we do have uh, volunteers that are nest current national teams as well. Fiji football women's captain Sonali Rao says the program will also assist in the preparation for the Pacific Games next year. Um, uh, we've got SPG coming next year. They just had, we just had the assembly last week. Um, so yeah, we We'll see how everything goes. We'll prepare well for the SPG. The one-day workshop also focused on women empowerment and sports development in Fiji. Kuroi Tandulala, FBC Sports. The 2018 Wheelathon came to an end today. Hosted by the Spinal Injuries Association, the week-long relay that started in Lautoka on Monday 
ended in Suva this afternoon. Meli Tavanga reports. Smiles of joy on the faces of 11 participants who drained themselves out in a four-day struggle to achieve their goal. Uh, the team uh, have uh, really enjoyed the wheeling through from uh, the West, Lotoka. I wasn't part of that. Uh, I just got to be part of the uh, No Sorry to Suva one where I am now. Yeah, this is the Suva team. But then, yeah, it's been fun. Rodan says they were overwhelmed by the support from the public. And uh, yeah, we managed to fill up around 19 cans yesterday. And by yesterday afternoon, coming to the end, there was another added additional uh, 20 cans. Meanwhile, an emotional participant says all these were possible through their willing heart, despite their disability. It's very challenging. Uh, it's through your. As you usually say, if you believe yourself, you can do it, then you can achieve whatever you can do. So the week-long event ends in a celebration of the 25th anniversary of Spinal Injuries Association Mobility Services tomorrow at its complex on Brown Street, Suva. The money raised by the rigorous event will be used to buy new wheelchairs. Melitavanga, FBC Sports. Former Fiji netball rep and one of Fiji's longest serving sports administrators, Alini Rambitu, passed away at her home on Wednesday. Pasanak Chief Executive Lorraine Ma says they are deeply saddened by the passing of Rambitu, who will be remembered for her inspiring netball career as well as her dedication, commitment and loyalty to the sporting family of Fasanok. In addition to representing Fiji in netball, Rambitu served for many years as Secretary for Netball Fiji and was also Team Fiji's Head of Delegation to the 2013 Pacific Games. 27-year-old superstar Portia Woodman is one of rugby's most recognizable athletes. In fact, she was rated more influential than any All Black over the past two years. But this year came to a devastating end when she sustained a severe injury that will keep her on the sidelines for a lengthy spell. However, she says it's been a positive wake-up call. Now to the play of the day. Oklahoma City Thunder may have gone down to New Orleans yesterday, but not before big Kiwi Stephen Adams pulled off this beautiful Euro step finger roll. That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather and in tonight's Weird and Wonderful, the story of a British couple who famous, famously rather, lost the engagement ring in New York's Times Square. That's coming up. Radio Fiji One Radio Fiji One Viti. In tonight's new media, we review the Razor Blade Stealth non-gaming laptop. And we now join Angie with the latest in weather. Hello to you, to Friday and to the jolly good weekend. Yes, it's Friday in the hood and we had more anticipated showers throughout the country and teensy winsy bit of sunshine around. Now I know most are wishing for the showers to roll away so daily outdoor routines can be followed. Well, we'll find out more on that. But first, taking a look in the west, quite mild scattered clouds and showers will be around. Eastwards from Pak Habarusuva, a mix between sun and light showers, which can be expected later tonight. Low-lying areas and roads can be flooded, so take extreme care. And up north, quite cool with showers also expected. At sea, easterly winds 25 to 30 knots, a very rough seas. For the tides, high tide at 12.31 a.m. with low tide at 6.30 a.m. Sunrise at 6.25. For tomorrow, now this might be a bit of relief. The showers will be around but will slowly clear off as we approach the afternoon period. Perfect for a stroll on the beach. Tomorrow's temps, most centres will be cool in the low 30s. And looking further on to Sunday, another day of mixed conditions can be expected. So, happy weekend. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Ako. 
Thanks, Angie. And in Fijian Pulse tonight, we asked, should the Flying Fijians rope in more young players for the Rugby World Cup in Japan next year? I think uh, they should uh, bring in some uh, young players for next year's uh, World Cup. Uh, because looking, like, looking at uh, Europe uh, this year, like uh, they, they were using so many young players, uh, they were fielding in some more young players in that team. For example, like uh, Frank Romani, and he was uh, coping well with the uh, senior, senior players in the, that team. And I think there should be a mixture of young players and senior, senior players in the next year's World Cup. Uh, young players are included in the team because uh, they are very good at playing. Yeah, the team is all right. Yeah, like really looking at the you know the way the, uh, the young boys they are performing in the like the, the previous game that they had just played, eh? I think uh, we need to introduce more young players to play for the Rugby World Cup in 2019. In the world of the weird and wonderful, a British couple who lost the engagement ring in Times Square, New York, during a proposal, get a do-over, and this time it was on the popular Ellen show. Now recapping the main stories, incestuous father gets Fiji's first life sentence for rape, scamming soldier to be sentenced Monday, and small island states call for scaled action on climate change. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment this week, we are asking, should we continue roping in age group players into the seven squad? Visit our FBC website to answer. And before we go, our shot of the day was sent in by Simeli Tuisovivi with the picture caption as there's a sunrise and a sunset every single day and they're absolutely free. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share with us via our Facebook page FBC News or you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And that was your FBC News for tonight from the team and I. Stay safe and good night. मैं नवनीत नन नंबोलुम बुआ से जैसे फ्रेनी नोट मशहूर है वैसे रेडियो फिजी टू भी सभी जगह मशहूर है रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन सीमा नकाशी से मैं रेडियो फिजी टू पसंद करती हूँ सुनने के लिए रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन मैं हूँ अंकल किंग सिंगर टोकर टाउन के टैक्सी ड्राइवर देशे रग्बी फेम